Hi everyone, it is the big night of the Women's Prize announcement for 2020 and uh, I am here in Italy um, on holiday um, so I'm tuning in to uh, the live event uh, online and uh, since I did a, a live announcement uh, reaction video um, for the Booker International Prize I thought I would try doing one for the Women's Prize for Fiction as well and uh, so so yeah I'm, I'm here in lovely Italy and uh, and the sun is just setting now so but you can still see a bit of a view um, I'm, I'm staying in this lovely villa in northern Italy, um, right on Lake Orta, and uh, have a view over the lake. Um, it's really beautiful here, and uh, I feel very lucky to be here, although it's, you know, slightly stressful times to be traveling at the moment. Um, I'm going to be very loose in how I'm talking because I've just been at a wine tasting, and I've had several glasses of wine, and uh, so, you know, feeling very jolly, and um, and uh, I'm, I have a bit more to celebrate as well, so I've, um, I got myself a little bottle of bubbly um, to celebrate and uh, yeah and I'm really excited to see who's gonna be announced as the winner so if you watched my video um, with Anna um, which I wouldn't blame you if you didn't watch the whole thing it was quite long um, but uh, but I'm I'm sort of rooting for weather to win tonight um, it's it's I know it's an outsider choice I know it's not the popular opinion but uh, I just loved this novel and it really struck me but um but you know I have to say it's tough competition this year all the books on the shortlist are really great uh, and you know it's really monumental novels I think that are going to be read and remembered for years to come so uh, who knows who's actually going to win but um, but Anna and I both predicted um, who will actually win is Maggie O'Farrell for Hamnet um, I don't have all the books here with me but I brought a few of them you know just in case um, one of them actually wins tonight and you know I was hoping if I had enough time I would be rereading um, some of them while I'm on holiday here so um, so I've tuned into the online announcement and we can watch it here uh, on on screen and uh, yeah and I'm uh, very excited to see who's gonna win I'm slightly babbling uh, why don't I open this up in preparation for the actual video starting uh, so yeah um, I've just been relaxing here and reading a lot over the course of this week um, it's been really lovely to get some concentrated time away to be able to do that because uh, like I've mentioned in some of my videos before I have a family living right next to me um, who have young children who are quite loud and so all this time during lockdown i um, just been hearing them all the time and they're right next to my library so uh, it makes it quite difficult to uh, just sort of relax and read in that space which you know I totally understand like how difficult it is for families um, I really feel for them um, but you know at the same time I like to have my quiet reading time and so uh, so yeah it's been nice to get away to do that though we don't know if uh, Italy is gonna go on the sort of quarantine list for the UK we'll discover tomorrow um, if it's like gone on that list and if once we go back to the UK we're gonna have to quarantine for two weeks or not um, so uh, which I mean it'll be fine if we have to because I'm still working from home and and uh, we can get food deliveries it'll be totally manageable but uh, yeah it's a um, sort of stressful crazy time but uh yeah anyway <laughs> pop open the bubbly and i may stop babbling now and just um cut to the point when the event is actually starting turn the sound up a bit Ooh. pour some uh prosecco i was gonna say champagne but it's not champagne it's uh it's it's only prosecco of course it's 25 years of the prize um so yeah you can see hooray Oh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the screen so much. Oh, that's nice. They're going through all the past winners. I had been hoping to read um, some more of the past winners. I mean, I've read a lot of them uh, already, but um, but yeah, there's a number which I haven't read before. I haven't read Kate Grenville before. Uh, I, I haven't read Belcanto before, though I've read a few books by Anne Patchett. Um, yeah, like, let me know if you've read all of the women's past women's prize for fiction winners. That would be really impressive. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments um, which ones that you're keen to, to get to reading. Um, I loved Zadie Smith's On Beauty and Half a Yellow Sun I think is one of the most extraordinary winners from the Women's Prize in the past 25 years. Um, I want to get to reading Home because I've never read Home though I've read Gilead and I've read Lila and I absolutely loved Lila and of course the fourth book in Marilyn Robinson's trilogy is going to be published very soon so that's very exciting. Uh, a Girl is a Half-Formed Thing I love that novel so much it's so extraordinary. Ali Smith 
Smith. Oh, oh. And uh, Lisa McNerney, yay, glorious heresies. And the power, I, I know that divided a lot of people, but I thought it was excellent. And yeah, Home Fire, brilliant novel. And yeah, An American Marriage. So that brings us up to the current day and the six novels on the shortlist. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh. Hello. Good evening. Hello. I am Martha Lane Fox, the Ooh. very, very Turn this hand up a bit more. of judges for 2020. Mm. I know I can't see you all, but I think I can feel you all because I've seen the chat on the webinar and I've seen the excitement. Oh, I don't know where the chat is. I feel it in my heart. I How should add some of the chat, shouldn't I? To tonight's announcement. Oh yeah, there's the chat. I don't think that Kate and her founders 25 years ago could possibly have imagined that 25 years later, women's writing would have such an incredible resonance. Who could have forecasted that 2020 was going to be the year that it has been? From every angle, hmm. Women's writing and reading have become at the forefront of our human experience. I have been so honoured to chair the judges this year. Yes, it's been a bit tricky, even for someone who <laughs> loves technology like me. Mm. But for two major reasons, I couldn't be more proud that I've had the chance with my fellow judges to contribute to this incredible prize. It's an Firstly, amazing shortlist. Reading has quite literally, I know, saved people from their horrible local experiences over the last few months. For me, it's been this amazing prize. And then having read 70 novels, to be honest, <laughs> it has been reading poems, which I could just about manage in text. <laughs> but for others, I know people uh, have found I need to read more poetry. that fabulous escape or that very important reaffirmation of things that you thought and felt as the most profound human experiences. What an incredible set of times we are living through. But also, it won't have escaped anybody that women have felt the burden of this pandemic more than most. And particularly women from minority groups. It will be hard to have lived through 2020 without having thought very hard about your own privilege and your own position in the world. And that's why it's more important than ever that women's writing is shown to be as diverse and wonderful as it is. And why were we were so proud as judges to have such a diverse range of voices and talent on our shortlist. It's such a great message. When it came to the final judging meeting, I have to say I was a bit nervous. We'd had to do our long list to shortlist <laughs> judging meeting. Oh my also. God, can you imagine choosing judges, from these six novels? Tell you that it was tricky. It's really it difficult. It's hard to go through those fabulous books, get to six, and do it all without being able to stand up, give each other a hug, have a moment, <laughs> regroup. But you know what? I needn't have worried. Because actually, every single one of those books could have been a winner. And that took a massive amount of pressure off us. We all, all love different books in different ways, but we all knew that any one of those books would have stood up to the test of time. Mm. And what an incredible journey that has been. But the winner is one that we could all quite unanimously and very clearly get behind as something that stood out so Maybe beautifully and remarkably mm. for all of us and for this moment in time. Mm. So before we reveal the 2020 for this moment in Price time. Fiction winner. I think it's whether or how many judges enjoyed the books or as much as another. Such as on the shortlist. Bernadine Everisto, girl, woman, other. Oh, wouldn't Bernadine it be great if she 54. was able to ha stand in the spotlight by herself Russian and win a prize? Ships, a classic tale, but mm. told with a modern twist through the eyes, through the lens of women. Dominicana is a wonderful, beautiful, exquisite novel about a young woman from the Dominican Republic getting I married agree. and moving to New York <laughs> in the 1960s. The Mirror in the Light is a supremely confident, groundbreaking <sighs> conclusion to a story begun in Walpole, charting the extraordinary rise and bloody fall of Thomas Cromwell. Mm. Hamlet is the heart-stopping family story behind Shakespeare's most famous play. Weather is a brilliant heart. I mean, Anna really did 
did bring me around to some of the qualities of Hamnet that I just... It took me a while to, to come around to, although, you know, I still have my slight like reservations about I wish, it. I, I didn't love it as much as everyone else. Faces but, right now, mm. As the anticipation I'm sure is building. I know oh. my heart is fluttering a little bit and I bet those six authors are also sitting on slightly on the edge of their chairs, even if they're pretending to be a bit more I'll probably having a drink. See you. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's Hold on to the edge of your laptops. It's We're about to announce the 25th Women's Prize for Fiction mm. winner for 2020. What's it gonna be? And the winner is... <gasps> it's Hamlet! Maggie O'Farrell for <sighs> Hamlet. <laughs> wow. I mean, oh gosh. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are predicting this, hoping I'm this. I'm sure so many people are happy about this. Extremely happy making news for me that mm. you are the winner of the 25th Women's Prize for uh -oh. Fiction. No! Yes, oh my it's God. true. It's just amazing. Gosh, and especially because oh, the shortlist was so extraordinary. It never occurred to me, actually. I, uh, yeah, yeah it's such those. Five books, so amazing. It was a tough process to get from long list to short list, and then <laughs> everyone had to feel. Um, oh, look at how surprised she is. Oh. So many of those books, but when it came to your book, there was no question that it should be the winner. So please know that we all loved all the books, but you uh. are. That was an outstanding novel and it moved everybody so deeply. I'm, I'm so grateful to all of you. I Yeah, it's just an amazing, amazing feeling that, and um, yeah, all the judges I know are really women who I really respect and whose opinions I really respect. So that means that means a huge amount to me. What Aww. what now? What happens? Can you win a prize? I guess it makes, will it make a difference? I don't know. <laughs> I'm really going to celebrate. I don't know how I'm going to celebrate. That's really strange. I feel like I want to run out into the garden and howl at the moon. Have some wine. <laughs> Dad would do that. <laughs> Definitely do that. Definitely. Maybe I will. Because I'm going to apologise to all the residents of Edinburgh. There are no wolves. <laughs> it's just me. Yay. <laughs> wow. So there it is. Uh, okay. And turn the sound down again. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Anna and I both sort of predicted and really thought that this was going to win. And wow, and it did. Um, how extraordinary. And like, I, I think, you know, it's so incredible, isn't it, that this is a novel that is really about the process of grief um, during a plague in, in England. And, and you know, this, she, of course, she never could have predicted that we would all be experiencing a pandemic like this and a lot of people are experiencing grief because of, of this of losing loved ones um due to it and and the way that this portrays that that whole process of grief and how someone is taken away totally unexpectedly and um yeah and, and the the process of the family trying to deal with that i mean it's such a a timely novel for for that reason in such a um you know way that no one could have anticipated so i think it's it's extraordinary that you know this is a novel that really will speak to now even though it's about the the 1600s and and uh, you know and 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 a family during that time yeah it's um it's it's really amazing but um but also yeah i'm just i'm i I am happy that more people are going to be reading Maggie O'Farrell because this is a confession I have to make and something I have to say when I was a judge on the British Book Awards was that two or three years ago? And Maggie O'Farrell's novel, This Must Be the Place, was shortlisted for that award, and we were discussing it. And um, and and we, uh, you know, we had picked Sarah Perry's novel, um, The Essex Serpent, to win that award. But um, her novel, This Must Be the Place, was probably the you know a close second to that novel. And um, and I, it was the first time I had read Maggie O'Farrell, and I absolutely loved that novel. And I thought I thought this is a really extraordinary writer and um, so um, I, I've been wanting to go back and read more of her work you know like Anna is such a fan of, of her work and has read all of her books and like she mentioned in our video um, um, Tinder Press have uh, reissued uh, all of her previous novels so that's very convenient for readers you know like me and probably readers who hadn't read Maggie O'Farrell before this novel that um, she has this great back catalog that we can now discover and enjoy um, so I'm really glad that um, that that, that uh, is is uh, is there for, for us to to have and um yeah and and you know like I said you know I've I have talked about how I had slight issues with this novel and how you know I was slightly confused about why this is 
it, I mean, I understand that she was initially inspired to write this because of the story of Ham of uh, of Shakespeare's grief for his son and naming his play Hamlet and um, wanting to get into that, but then made it more about his wife and, and his family. And, uh, you know, and I was just slightly confused since so little is known about their family and since Shakespeare doesn't enter into it all that much, that why is this sort of still about Shakespeare's family, even though it could have been sort of any family that she sort of created from that time period. But um, but that's like a very minor quibble because the actual content of this novel is very beautifully and powerfully written. So I do hugely appreciate this novel and I don't want to be seen as as like I'm against it I'm very very happy that it's one even though you know it wasn't sort of my favorite choice from from the list um I I think it's a really excellent novel so um so yeah I'm very I'm very happy it's one if you um have other suggestions of other Maggie O'Farrell novels you've read and really enjoyed uh let me know in the comments below I'd really like more suggestions of what to read next um and if uh yeah and if if um if you're interested in reading more of Maggie O'Farrell or if you've not read this novel and are interested in reading it now uh, let me know uh, in the, the comments below but yeah I'm sort of yeah sad that that, uh, that weather didn't get it I feel like Jenny Offal is a novel as an author that uh, you know could uh, you know do with some more recognition and even though she's very well regarded you know I, I don't know if she's won any major prizes before and uh, so but uh, but yeah, and, and obviously um, Girl, Woman, Other has been selling incredibly well. So just on sort of like a practical level of like authors that could do with more attention and like more sales, I'm, I'm very happy this novel won. I mean, I know that doesn't enter into it when picking the best novel, but just, you know, in sort of practical terms of, of, of wanting to see a, a novel have more of a presence in the public consciousness of, you know, people who maybe only read um, two or three books a year and, and want direction of which one to read. Um, I'm, I'm very glad that, uh, you know, this is going to, um, people will be pointed to this. So, um, yeah, I want to I wanna listen to a bit more of this conversation that they're having before I go out. And I was just wondering for you, how did it feel that something you'd created in one context then came to have this complete sort of new yeah, significance? Yeah, exactly, right? It was actually published in March. It, it was very strange. I mean, certainly, I, I never saw it coming. I mean, none of us did, you know. No. And obviously, when I wrote that chapter, you know, when it was a year or two years ago, whatever, you know, it was just an act of research. I remember sitting in my, <laughs> you know, my ergonomic chair in my centrally heated house thinking, I wonder what it feels like to know that there is this horrible... So incredible, the whole disease, section where you know, she shows the path to, of this pandemic going from a ship to, to the family in England. Um, but the strange thing is, you know, the, the maps that I was looking at of Elizabethan trade routes and the arrows that the, the plague took as it came and swept through Europe mm. look eerily similar to the ones that we were looking at in February and March. So yeah. it is strange. But I think, you know, usually when you finish a book, you know, when you put the final full stop, uh, your relationship with it is closed and it's sort of set in stone in some way. But with this book, actually, oddly, I think <laughs> with Hamlet, I, in the last six months, my relationship with it has altered. Mm. Because I feel, in a sense, I feel closer to the characters, actually. I feel closer to the experience of, the, you know, that the Elizabethans must have undergone. Because they were constantly terrified of this disease, among many others, unfortunately. Yeah, and theatres were, were closing. and aware and on the alert for the, for the signals. And they would have been in what we would now call lockdown, you know, repeatedly throughout their lives. Mm. And, I mean, you create that world so vividly as it's, it's, it's we can sort of yeah. feel the textures and hear the sounds of this Elizabethan world. And... It, you do it in a way that's beautiful and that you create it privately and publicly. There are these private spaces and these public spaces. And it's just, it's so vivid to me. That is, the yeah, it's so amazing. Um, I'm just gonna, gonna stop it now because otherwise I'll just sort of go on and the light is fading even more. Uh, obviously I'm just improvising lighting for, um, to film this video, but, uh, but yeah, uh, it's, um, yeah, I think it's a great result. I'm really happy and excited. So yeah, let me know what you think. I, I'm sad that um, Anna did make a bet for this. So I don't know how much she's won from um, making a bet um, from uh, from this, but, uh, but when I went on the, yeah, I tried to place a bet 
bet myself, but wasn't able to find the link or the, the location online to, to place the bet. I wish I had. Ah, could have made some money. But, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, it's um, the main thing is that, uh, yeah, a, there's a great winner, a great shortlist still. I'd really encourage you to read the entire shortlist if you haven't, because I enjoyed all six of these novels, um, really excellent books. And there's still novels from the long list that I want to get to, to reading. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, just a uh, question of time, isn't it, uh, of getting to them. So let me know what you think about the results in the comments below. Um, if you've read it, if you haven't read it, all of that good stuff. And uh, I'll chat to you again soon. Bye, everyone.